Hello friends, welcome back. Let's look at some simple example on continuity of a function. We have been given a function f of x which is defined by half into x square minus 4 if the boundary is between x is between 0 and 2 open interval. If x equal to 2 then f of x is 0. If x is greater than 0 2 if x is greater than 2 f of x is given by 2 minus 8 by x square. We have to check the continuity of this function at x equal to 2. Now let us try to recall what we know about the continuity of a function. A function is said to be continuous 1 f of x is defined at x equal to 2 at x equal to 2 it is equal to 0 so that is good. Second thing the limit should exist left hand side and right hand side. So for that I will calculate left hand limit then I will also calculate right hand limit then if both of them are equal then I will say limit exists. The third thing what I should do is this value should be equal to f of 0. So all of them should be equal all three of them then I can say the function is continuous at x equal to 2. So for that let us take left hand limit. So we are talking about so what we are talking about is limit x tends to 0 minus f of x that is equal to as x tends to 0 f of x f of x is nothing but equal to. So we have to find out the limit as x tends to 2. So we are trying to take out the left hand limit it is not 0 that was a mistake. So we can see here at x equal to 2. So for 2 if you come from the left hand side the function is given by half into x square minus 4. So this is nothing but equal to half into x square minus 4 which is equal to half into 2 square minus 4 that is equal to 4 minus 4 equal to 0. So left hand limit is equal to 0. What we have done? x tends to 2 minus that means the limit is between 0 and 2 the function is given by half into x square minus 4. So substituting the value of x equal to 2 we get left hand limit equal to 0. Let us look into right hand limit now. If I look at right hand limit we will have limit x tends to 2 plus f of x. If x is greater than 2 then f of x is given by 2 minus 8 by x square. Shall I say here limit also x tends to 2 minus. Similarly here 2 minus 8 by x square limit as x tends to 2 plus I should write it there. So I will say limit x tends to 2 plus that is nothing but equal to 2 minus 8 divided by 2 square that is equal to 2 minus 2 that is equal to 0. Now we can see that the left hand limit is 0 and the right hand limit is also equal to 0 that means the limit exists and is equal to 0. Now let us see what is f of 0. If x equal to 2 then f of 0 is equal to 0. So we can see that left hand limit is equal to right hand limit which is also equal to f of 0. So now based on this we can say that the function is continuous. The one easy way to understand whether a function is continuous or not on graph is check whether you can draw the curve at that particular point without lifting your pen. If you are able to do that then the function is continuous. Let us do one more example on this. Let us look at this example. We have been given that f of x is continuous on R. We have to find out the constants A and B. What we know if f of x is continuous we know that the limit exists and equal to f of a. So this is what we know. We know that the limit exists as x tends to a f of x is equal to f of a. So, so we will check the continuity at 
particular points and see based on that what conditions we can get. We will check continuity at 0, we will check continuity at 1 and we will check continuity at 3. Now first let us go to 0. You see that f of x equal to sin x if x less than or equal to 0 and if 0 is less than x less than 1 then f of x is given by x square plus a. So if I take the condition x less than or equal to 0 that means it is left hand limit. Left hand limit is equal to sin 0 equal to f of 0. f of 0 is nothing but f of 0 is uh, sin 0 less than is also that greater than if I go that is nothing but equal to 0 square plus a that will tell me 0 equal to a that means a value is equal to 0. So what we are trying to do now we are trying to check continuity because we already have been told continuous that means left hand limit should be equal to right hand limit should be equal to f of a that is what we are checking. Now let us go to 1. If I go to 1 on the left hand side the value is nothing but equal to x square plus a. So that is nothing but 1 square plus a that is equal to at x equal to 1 or f of a is nothing but equal to b into 1 plus 3. So that tells me a equal to 1 plus a is equal to b plus 3 or can I say a equal to b plus 2. So this itself is enough but we can check the third point also we should get the same thing. If I take 3 if left hand limit if I take f of 3 f of 3 equal to 3b plus 3 that should be equal to right hand limit which is equal to minus 3. We can check that one too we will have 3b equal to minus 6 b equal to minus 2 here I have a equal to b plus 2 a is already 0 so that gives me b equal to minus 2 so the values are a equal to 0 b equal to minus 2. Let me summarize this how we have done that. We have been given that this function is continuous on real numbers. So we have been given it is a piecewise function so we have been given how the value of f of x changes for different boundaries. I see some critical points x equal to 0, x equal to 1, x equal to 3. If I took x equal to 0, if the function is continuous, then f of a should be equal to left hand limit or right hand limit. All three of them should be equal. If I take f of a that is 0 and right hand limit at 0 is nothing but equal to a. So a is equal to 0. If I take at point 1, continuity at 1, I see that the left hand limit is equal to 1 square plus a and f of a is equal to b plus 3. By simplifying we get b equal to minus 2. The same thing you can also obtain if you take at point 3 left hand limit or f of I go for f of a that is equal to 3b plus 3 that should be equal to right hand limit which is minus 3. So we can solve this by equating left hand limit is equal to right hand limit at that particular point which is also equal to f of a. So left hand limit at a is equal to right hand limit at a is equal to f of a. These three should satisfy because the function is already given to be continuous. So based on that we can find out the values of a and b. So in the next session we will start derivatives and look into the first principle of differentiation. Thanks for your time. Bye for now.